<laughs> right now, I'm doing something remarkable. You probably don't think it's remarkable because you do it all the time too, but trust me, it is. If you consider the entire tree of life, then what I am doing right now is one of the most remarkable things that has ever evolved. I'm remarking talking. Language is really weird. We're the only animal in the entire world that does it, and without it, all of the things that we associate with humanity, like religion or art or government or marriage, none of it would be possible. So if you want to understand what it means to be human, then a good place to start is the evolution of language. So how did language evolve? To help answer that question, or at least a small part of it, let's hear from Madza Farias Virgins. She looks for hints about the evolution of language in an unusual place. Songbirds. What I do is to use birds. Here is a spectrogram of bird song. In each one of these units here with different spectral structures is called a note. And these notes can be put together to compose a syllable. And syllables are put together to compose a motif. And motifs are then repeated to compose a song bout. Among all the different kinds of vocalizations, the meowing and the barking and the mooing, human language and bird song are unique in that they both possess phonology. What this means is that both language and bird song are made up of discrete subunits, and there are rules which govern how those subunits can fit together. I before E, except after C. Phonological syntax are rules that will dictate which combinations are possible. Madza studies two closely related birds, the Bengalese finch and the white-backed munia. Both of their songs are made up of similar subunits, but they differ in how those subunits are put together. <laughs> Quite complicated. This is Kazuo Okanoya, one of Madza's collaborators. Now, let's hear the white lumped Munir song. Okay, I did it. You see here, it looks like complicated, but actually it's repetition of the same sequences like this. Here, Looks like complicated, and it's really complicated. The rules governing the songs of these two birds are quite different. For the white-backed munia, the song starts at this syllable, then moves on to this one, then goes to this one, then can either go back here or continue on to the end. But for the Bengalese finch, the syntax is much more complicated. There are multiple loops and places where parts of the song that can repeat, resulting in a lot more variation. What makes this example particularly useful for understanding the origin of language is that we know exactly when and where the complicated Bengalese finch song evolved from the simpler white backed munia song. So white backed munias were imported to Japan from China about 250 years ago. Bird breeders brought this wild Chinese bird and they start breeding these birds. First, you know, just like any process of domestication, there is a selection for tameness. About 140 years ago, and color plumage mutations occurred, giving orange to the Bengalese finch. But interestingly enough, Bengalese finches were never bred for singing ability. Nonetheless, the Bengalese finch developed a much less stereotyped song than its white ancestor. There is no record for humans selecting Bengalese finches based on the song, but Bengalese finch songs somehow evolved into a much more complex and much more flexible song than the white backed union song. So there's a puzzle here, right? It looks like complex vocalizations evolved almost by accident. Over the course of 200 years, while they were being selected for tameness and color, complex vocalizations also evolved in tandem like a side effect. So what can this tell us about the evolution of other complex vocalizations, like language? We typically assume that complex adaptations, like language or birdsong, can only evolve in response to natural selection for a specific trait. But what this Finch example suggests is that sometimes complexity can evolve in response to the absence of natural selection. In the wild, there's a lot of selection pressure to keep songs short and simple. The environment is more stressful, so there's not that much time to learn anything too complicated, and it's important to make sure that your song doesn't get confused with the song of another species. But in captivity, the stress of trying to find food or of identifying a mate is reduced. Any mistakes that a finch makes in its song won't necessarily prevent it from mating, and so they can get passed on to the next generation. 
In the absence of natural selection, complexity can evolve because there is no selective force keeping things simple. This ties into what in humans is called the self-domestication hypothesis. The idea goes that as humans started living in more tightly cooperative groups, natural selection became relaxed. In this new, easier environment, early humans had more freedom to experiment, which could potentially have resulted in greater vocal complexity and eventually, language. Of course, it's a very, very long way from complexifying birdsong to evolving full-blown language. For one thing, birdsong doesn't have symbolic meaning, not in the way that a sentence does. But still, it's valuable to look for these parallels nonetheless. Because we have language, we often have this bad habit of assuming that we are somehow separate from the rest of the natural world. But when we identify these broad patterns which connect bird and human evolution, we can challenge that assumption. Humans are indeed unique, but the forces that have shaped us have also shaped the rest of the living world, and sometimes what shapes us is not natural selection, but its absence. Thanks for watching! This video is based off of a lecture that Madza gave for the EVOS seminar series. What we do on this channel is take really interesting lectures like Madza's and then compress them into short, shareable videos like this one. There's a link in the description to Madza's full talk. She goes into a lot more detail than we could in this video. And if you liked this video, you can give it a thumbs up and then maybe hit that subscribe button to see more.